Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of The Free American. I'm your host, I am Clay Douglas. I am the one and the only. And uh, not taking calls today. Tried that. But you only get the combative types on here. The ones that block their numbers or we can't check on them, we can't call them back, can't talk to them. Just ain't going to do that. Ain't going to put up with that. If they, uh, that means they're trolls. They're people that hide their identity, don't want you to know who they really are. They come up with a storybook name like Dumbledore. Then I challenge you and try to pick a fight. One that uh, you can't really win because you can't touch them and uh, you can't prove them wrong. And uh, they just want to sit there and call names. So I'm not going to go through with that. Now, we're really, I've been doing this for 25 years at least. Actually started a long time before that when I blew the whistle on George Bush or when he was president. His star, his uh, drug dealing operation, Operation Watchtower. And uh, that first got the heat on me. Then we had the biggest heist in history. That was 9-11. And it's necessary for you to understand that it was 9-11. It was my comments on March 2004. After I put in almost two years of research... Okay, I see I've got uh, Sun Coast Ricky in here making his little fucking comments. All right, he just made his comments and ran like the chicken shit he uh, trolled that he is. Complains because he can't get on the air and talk to me and say give me his insults firsthand. That's because the motherfucker's too dumb to dial a telephone and do it like normal people. My God. This is one of the things that's really bothering me, folks. I've been doing this for 25 years. I did it, I do it, I do it because I'm concerned for the American people. I've studied history, I've studied ancient history, and I've seen what they've done, how they played country against country. I've read the protocols of the elders of Zion. And if you haven't read that, you can't understand what's going on in the world. That makes you a sheep being set up for slaughter. If you can't learn from history, then you are doomed to repeat it. We keep repeating it over and over again. We go from slavery and then you have a few people that stand up like our founding fathers for freedom. And they didn't get any support. I don't get any support. Bill Cooper didn't get any support. And they killed him. And they tried to kill me in 2004. 
Wasn't no fucking accident. I've been riding a motorcycle for 50, 50 years, at least 50 years, maybe 55 now. And I don't fucking have accidents. And I had an accident in May 20, 2004 that put me in uh, three hospitals, kept me unconscious and drugged for three months, or hard to do a radio show, three months. When you're being fed a house young, howled all Valium, morphine, who knows what else. You have people show up in blue pinstripe suits to take credit for your hallucinations. You can thank us for those. You had hallucinations, Clay? Yeah, I had hallucinations, but I never told anybody. So how did you know about it? Yeah, we're CIA, Clay. We just didn't like you publishing F, Donald, I think you're a lying son of a bitch. I was going to boot you. But, uh, I don't believe you. And we got all these calls stacked up. Well, I'm not taking calls. But since you actually did it right there, Mark, I'll see if you're real. There's no 203. There's no 203 in my phone line here. There's a two one three, but there's no two o three. You forget what your fucking phone number is. So you're already fucking up. You're supposed to be a reviewer for the L.A. Times, and you don't know what your fucking phone number is? This is why I don't take calls anymore. So, F. Donald, you're a lying motherfucker. And Ricky... You got a number there, Suncoast Ricky. You on the fucking, you call in, you learn how to use a fucking telephone yet? Yeah, yeah, I'll just suspend what I was planning on doing today, and I'll take a few phone calls from people that are at least smart enough to write, type in their phone number, 347. Congratulations on having at least half a brain. Now let's see what else you got. Who are you? Where are you? And what uh, bring, makes you uh, call in today? 347. Hello, Clay. How are you? This is Herb. This is who? This is Herb, Herb Rubenstein. We spoke last night. How are you? I'm fine. What do you want? Uh, what do you got to say to a nation of people? Well, as I told you last night, Clay, I, I found oh, a lot that's of right. Your, you're uh, from the anti- you're from the ADL, Herb. Is that right, Clay? I find a lot of your anti-Semitic rhetoric. I ask you a question, you dumb Jew. I ask you a question. If you can't answer my questions, get off of my program. Get off of my line. 
Can you play. answer a play. question, play. Irv? Are you with the yes. ADL? Play. Yes, Don't play. talk over I me. Said yes. Don't talk over me or I'll hang up on you, play. you ignorant fucking Jew. This is very frustrating. Clay. Yeah, you can't answer questions. Frustrating to me, too. That you can't answer a direct question you. like your name. Like, who are you with, Irv? I just answered your question. But you were shouting over No, you must have answered it while I was talking. Because you you Jews got the most irritating habit of talking while you should be fucking listening. Try to wise up a little bit. Irv. Clay, all right. All right, Clay. All right. Can I say what I... Hello, conversation is, Irv. That's when I talk. You listen. You know, you talk, and I'll listen, all right? You ignorant son of a bitch. Clay. The, the 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 amount of anti-Semitic rhetoric that I have been hearing on the Free American program in the past couple months is frankly just alarming to myself. You I, should have been listening for 20 years, call, you dumb son of a bitch, because I've been saying the same thing for 20 my, years. Oh, my goodness. In my phone call last night, I told you that we would be happy to provide you with a re-education program to teach you the true history of the Jewish people and the Jewish diaspora. Have yeah. you thought that I believe I believe my comments to you last night would be uh, the same as they would be today. Fuck you. Go to hell. Leave me alone. I don't Clay, need a re-education. I know the truth about you lying, war-making, money-making, fucking Jews. You're talking while you I'm talking, you son of a bitch, and I can out-talk you, and I can hang up on you. Now shut up while I'm talking, or you won't be on my Very fucking well. program. You got it? Very well. It, you are right. It is your program, and I am a guest. You're goddamn so go right ahead it is. And you, you let me, you tell me when I am allowed to speak. You're allowed to speak now. Go ahead. Very well. Clay, you have been fed lie after lie perpetrated by our enemies, the enemies of the Jewish people. And unfortunately, oh, you wait, wait, have wait, 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 shut oh, up, boy. wait, who are the enemies of the Jewish people? Anybody that's not Jewish, is that it? Who are the enemies? Uh, Let's be a little yes. more specific here, you racist motherfucker. Go ahead. I I am not an well. You uh, would be considered an enemy of the Jewish people, judging by the Free American. Well, you're absolutely correct. I am because you and did you start like every fucking war. You killed you killed Jesus Christ. You killed him, and uh, you're also oh, Clay, come probably on, your God is the one that told Abraham to kill the son. Shut up, you motherfucker! I'll hang up on you. And this ain't and your yeah, show. This is my show. And I'm fucking talking. Us. Shut up. Shut up. Now it's your turn to talk, you rude motherfucker. Go ahead. Well, I just hey, want to clarify. Hey, from the NDL. You and, we, you and I pray to the same God. No, we don't. You pray to the devil. Jesus said, you pray to the devil. So why don't you tell the truth here, you lying motherfucker? See, there you go, Clay. You, you, you're talking just craziness. The fact that Jews pray no, to the devil. I'm not talking and, craziness. Uh, I quoted well. the Bible. I quoted Jesus. So you tell me I'm crazy because I'm quoting the man that you killed, Jesus Christ? Clay, I would like to extend an olive branch to you. Fuck you. you. Take your that? olive branch and stick it up your ass. I don't call I like a truce I, with a fucking enemy of the world. I, Go ahead. I would like to invite you to a dinner with my family, you and Candy. You can bring your dogs over to my house. You can partake in a Seder 
and you could see that we're not the devil people you think we are. Yeah, sure. What? Uh, where? What? Where are you at? Where do you live? Where's your home at? You coward motherfucker! Uh, Go ben, ahead, tell me where you ben, are. Ben, Bensonhurst. I'm located in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. No, wouldn't go to fucking Brooklyn. You couldn't pay me to sit down in your shitty little house. No, I wouldn't do that. I don't concert with demons. I don't concert with devils. I don't concert with Jews. So take your dinner and smear on your walls and don't ever fucking call me or my show again. You got nothing to say. Fuck you, I'm going to to talk to other people now and tell the ADL uh, don't ever try to raise money with me again or I'll sue him for defamation. Dirty pussy. What if I were to shove a yarmulke up Candy's dirty pussy? Well, you see, I'm glad you finally revealed what you are. Candy's not in this. She's not into you. She is a lady and you just showed what a what an evil, slimy, degenerate asshole like that the ADL and all the yeah. fucking Jews that are in it are. Five, six, one, why do you want to talk to me? Hey, Clay, it's Philip. I'm calling from Florida. How are we doing today? I'm fine, Philip. How are you? Good. Not too bad, man. Hey, I was in the chat room. Uh, I don't know if I, uh, if, if you remember me about an hour before the show started. Uh, I want to. I'm a veteran too. I want to know. Am I talking to? Uh, were you an enlisted man or are you an officer? No, I was an enlisted man. I stood up or signed up for officers candidate school, and I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I was uh, really upset about it too. I went in, no, found it on the sergeant's desk, and saying, "Man, I I have never failed a test in my life. Why didn't I get OCS? Oh, you didn't fail a test. You scored so high on the test, they won't let you be an officer." What? I said, "What do you mean, man? Why you you only you only let stupid people become officers? No, no, but anyone with your IQ will question orders." Oh goodness! Okay, so they they wanted somebody they could uh, they they wanted somebody they could manipulate. Then is what you're saying? Exactly. I see. All right, man. Well, I just wanted to give you a shout out. Look, I, I don't know if you remember much of the discussion, but uh, I, like I said, I don't agree with. I don't hate the Jews. I don't see what the big deal is, but I do like your show because it's entertaining to me. Um, and I just want to say, you know, a lot of these guys who call in and, 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 and troll your show, uh, when you argue with them and when you, you know, people absolutely love to hear that, man. And I'm telling you, uh, if, if you kind of embrace that, and I guess more so, like, I, I, I know you have your principles, so if you're not interested, I, I understand. But, uh, you know, if you embrace that a little bit, um, you know, at, people are going to just be throwing money at you, man. I know you're asking for donations well, a lot. Uh, uh, you, uh, you, might, uh, you might tune in or re-listen to today's show because I just uh, debated uh, somebody who said he was from the ADL and actually he actually showed what a, what a despicable, slimy bunch the Jews from the ADL are by bringing into my business manager, my, my, uh, my lady here, Candy, uh, he brought her name into this and uh, made some gross comments about her, and uh, I don't appreciate it. Yeah, I, I ended up hanging I heard up on him. It's one thing to disagree with somebody, but you know, leave the man's wife out of it. You know, uh, you know, I, I disagree with you on a lot of things, but I'm not going to sit here and talk a bunch of stuff about your wife. That's you know, there's a line, uh, I think anyway, of decency. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I just wanted to say, I, I heard that conversation uh, with uh, with the guy from the Her- herb something, wherever he was from. Uh, Her- herb, and, uh, herb something or other. AD, herb ADL is yeah. the only thing I got him down at. He doesn't deserve a last name. They're all the same anyway. Yeah. Um, 
and and some of these guys like when they try and troll, like archon age. Fun. I call them archon age, Philip. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, like I, like I, another thing, like I was saying, is uh, you get a lot of phone calls that they might be troll calls, but at least they're funny. Um, for the not funny ones, have you? Does Blog Talk offer like a delay thing, or have you ever thought about getting a call screener? Yeah, they maybe, do, but know? it 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 takes as much time. I do this whole show alone, man. I don't have a producer. I don't have an assistant. I don't have a receptionist. I don't have a secretary. So. When you call, you, you staff, get me. Oh, you don't have any staff or any any of that stuff? You do that all by yourself? I write the books. I do the show. I do the research. Okay, well. You know, sometimes I, 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 sometimes uh, I, get a, I, I get a sandwich made for me, but. Uh, I see, I see. Well, that's always good. Uh, again, you know, I. I figure, you know, you, you put a lot of work into this, and, you know, uh, again, I, we don't have a lot of the same principles, but at, with all the work you put into this, at least you deserve a a, a rational, you know, phone call. Uh, so, you know, I just want to say that with a lot of these trolls, if you embrace it, man, they're going to be throwing money at you, I'm telling you. Uh, people, you know, uh, that jackass uh, Stern, um he, he's helped you a lot. He, you know, he, he doesn't realize it, I guess, but he's brought you a lot of listeners. People are beginning to realize who Clay Douglas is. Um, and just, you know, you go, yeah, I, I think it's people. about, I think it's about time for me to give him a call here. I mean, he's made money off of you. You know what I mean? So I, I think, I think you're entitled to a little bit if you're the one putting all the work in. <laughs> all I do is just, I mean, what, Whatever you hear on the Stern Show, he doesn't capture anything off of my phone calls that ain't me. He calls me, uh, you know, what does he put me up as? Clay Dillon, the uh, angry... uh, Angry political guy. Angry political guy. uh, And basically, I don't even consider myself... A political guy. I don't really give a fuck. Voting for a Republican or Democrat is they're just two wings of the same bird, you know? Oh, yeah. They're both trying to screw you. Yeah, big time. And I've been in the fucking presidential race. I've shook hands with John McCain. Took me uh, took me uh, 30 minutes to feel clean again after getting to the restroom, washing my hands. Oh, yeah. Been threatened by his staff. You know, I watched as every fucking cameraman on stage turned their cameras off when Charles Collins got up to speak to tell the Republicans we could buy back the uh, Federal Reserve, we could uh, shut it down, we could issue United States notes again, debt-free money, we could wipe out the federal, uh, our, our national debt overnight. Something that Trump ain't never fucking talked about. That's true. You know, well, those people at the top are, are benefiting on, on, on all of our debt. You know what I mean? On on our backs, you know, they're benefiting on that stuff. That we can agree Of on. course. Uh, but, hey, man, I, I know you got – I'm sure you got a lot of other guests. Um, you know, it's not too bad talking to you. Do you mind if I call back and, uh, you know, to, even if it's something we disagree on or at least a decent discussion – I don't mind. I don't mind. You know, I don't expect it. And don't actually, I'm not really wild about the whole idea of a lot of followers. You know, I I, 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 I like people to walk beside me. You know, you to, to, because if we work together, matter of fact, I think I'm, I, I'm putting a new guidelines up that if you can grow your own food, and you can generate your own power in your own home, and you can work with your neighbors, then that's the answer to the whole new world order. Uh, independence, right. Self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency. That's the answer. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, well, listen here, man. I'm just getting into work, so uh, I will go ahead and let you go so you can continue on with your program. 
and uh, maybe I'll give you a call tomorrow or later on in the week or something. All right. All right. Thanks for uh, thanks for listening, man. Thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. This is a real phone call, folks. This is participating in the show. This is putting your two cents in, and this is the kind of listener I want. This is who I do it for, folks. Thank you. All right. All right. What else we got here? All right, bud. Uh, Let me see. Yeah, I see the block numbers up here. Got two block numbers. One of them says uh, he owns a free American. Fuck you. And one of them says uh, he's Professor Dumbledore. 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 Fuck him. Just another goddamn troll. And the rest of you are just listening. So I did get all this back up. 310 from Los Angeles has been hanging on so diligently for hello. Who are you? What do you want? 310, wake up. 7206160. You held up your hand. You want to. You wanted to talk to me. I've got you on the air now. Speak up. California, wake up. Okay, good. You're out of here. Fuck you. There ain't nobody else here. Someone, uh, what they're talking about in the chat room is one of these stern trolls came up and accused me of stealing his persona. And he stole all, and then I stole all of that listeners that he had for being on the radio for 35 years. He claimed he was on there for 35 years as Clay Douglas. Sorry, bud. I'm the only Clay Douglas that's out there. And then uh, he had his kids saying they were starving to death and uh, a number of other bullshit. It was just uh, uh, an incredible little imaginary gig they had, and then they, they started in with, uh, "Well, you didn't really, you didn't really uh, take uh, that that oath at 17 over there in Dallas. Now you were down in Mexico wearing orange speedos or something like that." Stern's people came up with a lot of imaginary shit. And then ran it on me on the uh, when they called in on the chat. So you can probably go back and I, I put all those chats up. I didn't say anything I was ashamed of, you know. Sorry, if you don't don't listen to my show. If you don't want to hear me say fuck you, go to hell, get off of my show. Don't call me again. It's my standard line. Back to nine eleven. Okay, F. Donald. What was your name Hi, again? This is Mark um, from the LA Times again. And yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about the motif behind the deadly flashes of silver. Now, what inspired? Okay, you you say you're from the Los Angeles Times. Yes, look up my name. Go ahead. And um, what, ahead, what inspired Mark. you behind behind the motif? Of your novel, of Deadly well, Flashes of Silver. What was your inspiration for writing this novel? I was a John D. McDonald fan. I read every book that John D. McDonald ever wrote in the Travis McGee series and most of the other ones, The Girl, The Gold Watch, and everything else in his science fiction mode. And when he died, I was really, uh, I was kind of depressed about it. Wow, no more Travis McGee novels. And I heard a rumor that uh, John D. McDonald had gotten a fight with his uh, publisher and uh, 
He had threatened them with a black Travis McGee novel. Now, in the Travis McGee series, the titles all had a color in it. The first one, the first Travis McGee novel, was A Deep Blue Goodbye. Or The Deep Blue Goodbye. And uh, he had uh, he met a little girl from Texas by the name of Molly B. And then he went on Green Ripper, uh, Deadly Silver, uh, Lonely Silver Rain, the uh, Green Ripper, and he went on with uh, the numerous, every one of his titles was like that. I read them all. I've also yes. just... For your information here, before I was 14 years old, I read every science fiction book, or at least 90% of every science fiction book in the Fort Worth Public Library. Yes, I, and, um, definitely, I, I definitely see the uh, motifs from Travis McGee's novels tied in to the deadly flashes of silver. So I like how you expanded the motif of the, the perils of socialism and the conquest for the new world order without explicitly saying it. You know, like you shad, you just demonstrated how our lives are controlled, which I thought was amazing. You know, we had a hero who was constantly overshadowed by a guy by an unseen force, and he had to fight back. The the third novel will be uh, White Gold, and you know when I when I wrote the first one, One Bloody Alabaster Eye, I had people in Miami I, I let read it because I'd moved to Miami from uh, New Mexico, Arizona. Or New Mexico, from Texas, actually. And uh, I, uh, I had people say, "Well, that that character, that Trevor Cameron, that that's you, isn't it? That's you." No, no, no. My character's younger, stronger, faster, better looking, got more money, and killed more people than I have. Hmm. That generally stopped those kind of questions and comments. Yeah, it's just, but, it uh, was just so refreshing. It, the novel was refreshing from what I typically see, right? Like the novels we have in today's society, they're either very shallow or they promote a socialist narrative, whereas yours promotes the, the, the virtues of capitalism and the hard work get you its result in great things. You know, you're not playing the, the, um, the Trevor Cameron is not playing a victim role at all in the novel. No, Trevor Cameron is uh, is not a victim, in, uh, at model, least generally, generally speaking. You, well, he doesn't take the victim mentality is what I mean, right? Like, even though he may be subject to some very difficult circumstances, he never be, becomes a victim in the mentality sense. That's right. And did you model Trevor after yourself? To some extent. I am six foot four. I am 300 pounds. And I have been through a lot. You know, I have uncovered presidents smuggling drugs, you know, throughout this country. Been uh, partners with, uh, or the our presidents have been partners with General Manuel Noriega and President George Bush and President Bill Clinton, and I've covered those stories. And I have been threatened by the CIA, and I do ride a Harley and still ride a Harley at 71 years old. So there's a certain amount of it. Yeah, some some of my colleagues, when I've been uh, compilating the information for the review, some of my colleagues 
have been complaining about your novels, you know, I'm getting a lot of pushback because they say you need a gay character, you need to make a black man a hero, stuff like that. You know, they can't really get behind that. They can't really get beyond the Stop identity. Stop that. You I know, know that's I've what I I've been down to Jamaica. I've been the only white man sitting in a fucking movie theater in Jamaica. You know, I mean, I, I'm not against black people. I'm not, uh, but... Are they, uh, you know, I've also seen their uh, their little dope dens uh, down there in, uh, in the Caribbean, you know. So, or it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like down? I met, huh? Were they pretty rich down there in the Caribbean? The black people you met? No, they weren't rich. They were fucking poor. The wealth's all... Conglomerated the house at the top of the hill, you know, it's uh, just like it is here. Yeah. You know, we all got the same problems, we, you know, black or white or yellow, you know, it's just like uh, in, in Russia. The Russians, the Russian people have never been our enemies, and they've been enslaved under communism for a hundred years, and now they're kind of sitting back and laughing at us because we're going through the same thing they, they went through. Because do you feel like Putin is doing a great thing for the Russian people? Yeah, he's doing a great thing. He's kicked the bankers out. He's uh, he's certainly wary of uh, the Jews. He's come down on the whole homosexual movement, you know. Fuck gay pride, you know. Yeah, I don't have. I personally don't have anything against homosexuals. I just. Um, don't necessarily agree in gay marriage, you know. But, I don't um, care. I, I don't care what mm-hmm. you do with your body or who you do it with in the privacy of your home. Stay away from my kids. Stay away from my family. Stay away from me. That's all. You know. You don't have. Yeah. You can be as gay as you want. You know. Stay away from me. Just like that. Bag Ali G he did a HBO special and filmed me. He came to film me and he started coming around with that queer shit. And I said, okay, interview's over. And I jumped out of the stage and I said, you got five seconds to get out of my building here. And he took off did running you? and I went over and I grabbed the tape out of his cameraman's hand and I gave it back to him. I sold it back to him for a couple of thousand dollars. But uh, you can see that on HBO or could have seen it on HBO. I guess you can still get it on. Uh, you can see it on my website. <laughs> did you did you end up um, did you end up watching uh, Ali G's movie Bruno? Yeah. Our Borat, I mean, our Borat. Yes, it was Bruno. I think it was, uh, it was the show he took in Alabama, but the. Uh, Part with me, I, it was made in Georgia. I had I did a Free American Expo down in Georgia. Yeah, because Clay, I I think you just need to get the word out. You know, you if you're able to get the word out, you go on a few talk shows, show what you're truly about, express the true motifs behind your books. I feel like you could catch on. You know, and what we've been well, doing. Well, I Howard's I think book. so too. And uh, they've tried to keep that from happening. First of all, they tried to kill me 12 years ago. Second of all, they they closed down the Free American 12 years ago, but uh, uh, didn't close down the Internet, didn't close the show down. I wasn't able to do a show for about four months, but hard to do a radio show when you're drugged out of existence. Yeah, I was um I when I was doing my research, I ran across an article about that incident on the ACLU. And it seemed like it was a pretty rough accident, you know. They seemed like they tore your life apart. They forced your wife to leave you, all that type of stuff. Just the They totaled the bike and uh they kept me drugged for three months for three broken ribs. Wow. And a bump on the head. I had a bump on the head. Did your wife leave just because she was so scared of what was going on? No, she left because her father, who was the uh, 
a secretary, assistant secretary of agriculture under Kennedy, I believe. Got tied up with Billy Solestis, and uh, I stole his daughter away, and he didn't like me much. He told her if she came back to me, he would disown her. So she didn't come back. Wow. That's rough. That's really rough. Because how long were you married for? 24 years. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to deal with these damn trolls just being ridiculous, you know? That's all right. I'm going on. Uh, I'm going to call up. I called up Howard Stern today. I'll call him back tomorrow. Keep calling until I get on the show, or I'll sue him. Yeah, you might as well because you know. Yeah, well, the good thing about just getting on Howard Stern is you'll be able to broadcast your message to a wide audience and just show uh, and just show that you, the people, are not the enemy. We all have the common enemy if we don't see it. You know. And that's your message well, that you, you really present. And I think that was demonstrated today with that jerk from the ADL calling in. Showed just what kind yes. of person he was. If he was a, the ADL, we don't know that he was. But when did he this certainly person call portrayed in? the ADL and the, the Jewish mindset well. He was obviously a Jewish troll. And the ADL has mm-hmm. come after, been after me in Southern Poverty Law, been after me for over 20 some odd years. Now, well, the, 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 Trevor, people, the, the, the Trevor McGee, the Trevor Cameron series being modeled after they, they've tried to take over that too. They tried to tell me, oh well, you know, you're infringing on our copyrights, my copyright. Uh, they did uh, so the, some. They tried to pass themselves off as me, threatened to sue, threatened to sue me by pretending to me. Be you know, it don't work with me, guys. You can't intimidate me. You can't scare me. You know, you just, uh, you just, yeah. it's a little like being uh, a little like my character, Trevor Cameron. I ain't scared of dying, and I, uh, you know, I've been trained to hurt you more than you can hurt me. And also, when I, when I was doing some of my research, I just I came across some surprising statistics. You know, like the Jews make up 1% of the U.S. population, but they make up 30% of the billionaires in the United States. They're a really small percentage of the population. Throughout history, you know, they've been they've been persecuted and run out of run out of Europe multiple times, but they've been able to come back. Now, like honestly, part of me thinks that they may be the chosen race, just because if you look at the history, how they've dominated everything. Do you think that could be true? Well, they certainly think they are, and that's their propaganda. They are masters at propaganda. Their ADLs uh, are the Mossad's uh, motto is warfare through deception. They may not be the chosen race, but if they can convince you they are, you pay homage to it. I mean, go back, go back hundreds of years. What did Voltaire say? You can tell who your masters are by who you're not allowed to criticize. Oh. <gasps> Clay doctors. He's got the protocols of the elders of Zion on his website. He's a he, he's a uh, uh, he's anti-Semitic. He's a, he started the militia. What part of the Second Amendment don't you screaming motherfuckers understand? Goddamn right, I started the militia. I did it in the governor's office. Shut up. Get out of my sight. Stay out of arms reach of me, and you'll probably be okay. Yeah, I, def- I definitely see that viewpoint. But the um, the point that I was trying to make is, throughout human history, even you admit that they've controlled everything. It's like they, like God chose them. That's a possibility, right? Like God chose them to be the dominant race. I think uh, a God chose them and gave them a little bit of insight and a little bit of power, but. Uh, Personally, I think that God was Satan. I think uh, that Jesus tried to tell you to beware of the Jews and say they're Jews and aren't. They're of the synagogue of Satan. And he tells you further on in the Bible 
that they are the children of Satan, that they serve Satan, and you're worshiping them as Yahweh, you're worshiping them as God, you promoted them to God because they told you he was God? Get real. What kind of God would tell Abraham to kill his son? Jesus Christ, people, are you that fucking dumb? There's a God out yes, there. Sir. I talk to him all so, the time. But uh, so the Jew, the Jewish they're not God talking to him. Satan. The Jewish God is Satan. Yeah. So and Yahweh not necessarily Satan. Lucifer. You know, they try to they try to put the blame on Lucifer. I don't believe Lucifer was the bad guy. I believe Lucifer was God's best angel. You know? Yeah, I, I can I can see that. But the um the thing is like with um with the Jewish faith, so you believe that uh, yeah, like who is Jesus' father? Is that a different God from the Jewish God? Absolutely. Okay. So why do they still use the Old Testament? Huh? In, in, most, in most Christian Bibles, they combine the Torah or the Old Testament with the New Testament. You know, I'm just wondering why they do that still. I don't know. Thomas Jefferson put out the Thomas Jefferson Bible, and that was. Uh only had the words of Jesus in it. And the Old Testament is a history book of the coming of the uh, gods, so, multiple. And that's a history so, of the Garden of Eden, and um, that's not exactly what it was all cracked up to be. Why would God, the real God, the God of Jesus, uh, the God that can move planets around. Why Why would that God not want his creation to know good from evil unless, of course, he was evil? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, can, I can see where you're coming from. You know, like there, the atrocities committed in the Old Testament are even worse than those committed in the Quran. You know, it's pretty. it's a pretty horrendous book if you look at the atrocity, the genocide committed in the name of God. But at the same time, from what I've been told, wasn't Jesus Jewish? Or was he not? No. No, he was not. That was a fucking lie. So he wasn't raised Jewish or anything. He was a Gentile. Yeah. Okay. So Jesus did not. uh, So Jesus' father is different from Yahweh or the Jewish God. Jesus is not the Messiah of the Jewish people. Jesus, Jesus is a new Messiah. No. no, and he exposed them. That's why they killed him. He exposed them for what? Being the spawn of the devil. Being the children of Satan. Being of the synagogue of Satan. Okay. Okay. Taking your money. Who did he run out of the temple? Why? So, uh, are the, are the money Muslims, changers. He ran the money changers out of the temple. But, um, yeah, I definitely see that. And do you think the Muslims are worse than the Jewish people? Because the Muslims believe that Jesus was the prophet. Small mitigation. The Muslims are being used just like the Jews are being used, just like the Christians are being used. You need to, if you want to study religion, study Gnosticism. Cause and effect. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to look into that more before I write my piece. Because, yeah, this, this call has really helped me, uh, provided me a great background of your beliefs, your uh, mindset, and your ideologies that you use, not only in your show, but when you implement your creative mind to create these works of art. And 
And I well, appreciate I've, been in, I've been in the penthouses of Miami. I've been in the skyscrapers in New York. I've been in the uh, hovels in uh, the Caribbean, drinking the same bars as Hemingway. You know, so I've got a lot of practical experience. I've been in storms in the... uh, You've traveled the world. Atlantic. You've been on... Yeah, you've traveled the world, been been a soldier, been against the war. You definitely have a diverse skill set, and you have diversity of experience. You know, you're a well-seasoned individual. Been in 49 states, eight or nine countries. Climbed the pyramids of the uh, in Guatemala. Wow! Been in the jungles of Belize. Been to the well, Grand boy, Canyon. Get... Been to the Great Lakes. And uh, Clay, I got to get back to writing this piece, but I definitely appreciate your time today. Thank you for taking my call, and I'll let you know when it's going to be published. All right, sir. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Yeah, 310 listening, and a block call that I ain't taking. Stuck your hand up there real quick. What do you want, 310? Who are you? Gary Salvino. All right, Gary, what's on your mind? I've had a decent conversation with somebody. What's on your mind? um, When you say that uh, Jesus was the prophet of Allah, what do you mean by that? I didn't say that. What are you hearing things? No, you you said that the Quran. I didn't say was, that. That Jesus was Jewish. Get your facts straight. If you don't talk to me, get your facts straight. Don't just sit there and I, make I, up shit. I, no, you you said that Jesus was the founder of Allah. I didn't say that. That all Jews Christ. are Christians. You're a dumb motherfucker. I ain't talking to you no more. Okay, you block fucking number. Who are you? What do you want? Hey, I just wanted to let you know you did say that. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. <laughs>